welcome and thank you for joining Agritecture's Travel Free Digital Conference. My name is Bea Minyana and I serve as an intern for Agritecture. And with me today is Erwin Belen. He is the founder of Urban Agriculture PH based in the Philippines. And he's going to talk to us today about community supported agriculture um, in the country's capital. So welcome Erwin, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you for having me here in your um, in your conference. Yeah, absolutely. We're we're really excited to have you, um, and we can dive right in. So I can turn it over to you to give your presentation. Yeah, sure. So um, good day, everyone. I am Irwin Belen, and uh, I'm here to introduce to you uh, what we do here in the Philippines. So uh, this is Urban Agriculture PH. So it's a Community supported agriculture, and uh, we want to provide access accessible food for all. So, food access in Metro Manila is always threatened since most of our food comes from other sources, so from other provinces, from other countries, and especially right now that we have uh, coronavirus and uh, Delusan Island is uh, locked. So, it's really a challenge for us right now to where we will be getting our food. So this is the question. What if the food supply is cut? And uh, also urban agriculture is uh, being integrated also to the solid waste management being done in the barangays or the communities. And uh, it still remains as one of the challenges in, this, in such communities, especially uh, our landfills are being uh, filled by uh, much garbage. So what we do in urban agriculture PH, so since it's agriculture, we focus on production of the vegetables. So there's the farm, and in the farm, we still produce high-value crops, so vegetables and herbs. We also do composting and other farm activities as well. And uh, from there, we sell the vegetables. So it's still for profit, but then in comparison to other to market to market prices, our vegetables are rel relatively cheaper. So why it why is it cheaper? Because the farm is being supported by the community. So the community it collects all the waste and then it's being used for the farm. So all the waste for recycling and composting, uh, these materials are being transferred to the farm. And in return, the farm can provide cheaper food and uh, accessible food for consumption of the community. Since this uh, garbage, sorry, uh, this trash being produced by the communities are essentially free. So uh, it gives no cost for the farm to use it for as inputs for the vegetables. So all in all, we call it the waste-to-waste -waste concept. So what are the long-term outcomes that we're looking with urban agriculture PH? So first, no one should be left hungry. So th this is also in line with the sustainable development goals. Um, we are producing fresh food, and this food, this food is always available at a cheaper price. We promote health and well-being to the people. We are also promoting environmental awareness to the communities. And we are also reducing the waste produced for the landfills. So what we do in our community farm, so first we assess the needs of uh, each farm. So uh, we look at the area, what's the available resources. We also provide trainings for uh, for the community members who are interested to do urban agriculture, and we are also promoting uh, waste segregation and proper disposal in the community. So, uh, I'll be sharing to you two cases of uh, what we do here in uh, in here in the Philippines. So, the first one is with East Rembo, Makati. So, Barangay East Rembo is a community in Makati City that. Uh, that's being uh, that where we piloted urban agriculture PH. So the people there loves to plant, and uh, in fact, they have 
they farm and they have bucket gardens around the, the area. So the barangay or the community also practices composing of food waste. So the food establishments in the area, uh, they, the barangay collects these uh, food waste and they compose it for the use of the farm. So this is the farm before, before we went there, before we had, we had intervention. And through our partners, we have provided them greenhouse. Uh, and we also provided them the inputs that they need for the farm. So here's a picture of uh, what we do. So I trained the people who are interested in doing urban agriculture so that after uh, teaching them, they can manage, they can uh, have the farm, uh, grow, they can grow their own vegetables in the farm. So this is the farm after few months of uh, helping them and uh, providing them the assistance that they needed. So we produced uh, leafy vegetables. Uh, we also produced smart cabbage or kangkong and also okra. So another uh, case that uh, I would share is the Good Food Farm in Barangay Ususa and Tagigiti. So this farm is a relatively new farm. Uh, we just started just um, early January this year. And uh, the Good Food Farm is being spearheaded by Rise Against Hunger Philippines. So it's, a, it's an NGO that uh, promotes, uh, uh, in providing, uh, they provide solutions uh, in solving hunger. So urban agriculture, PH served as the technical partner for this project. So with this farm, we integrated the similar concepts from East Rembo, but we also integrated another concept, which is aquaponics. So our plan is to produce tilapia alongside with lettuce, and uh, these greens will be sold to our partner hotels that, can, that will be served to their guests. So these are the pictures. So still we're producing leafy greens. And uh, since the area has, uh, has a vacant lot that we can plant on, so we, pla we planted on the ground and uh, we tried to produce eggplant or talong. Uh, we also produce uh, chilies and uh, tomatoes. So yeah, that, uh, let's make our communities more sustainable. Uh, I would like to invite you to uh, do community farming and hopefully you can uh, start your own farm. So with that, uh, thank you very much and uh, urban, uh, let's go urban agriculture. Thank you so much Erwin, that was incredible and it's, it's so inspiring to see how you have changed um, the face of how Manila is operating now and you're adding green to the city and you're helping the community, the community. Um, finding a way to make food accessible in a country where that's a very important issue for a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. For all that you're doing. Um, I have a few questions uh, based on your um, based on your on your presentation. I just wanted to start more broadly and ask what inspired you to be involved um, in urban agriculture in Manila or in the Philippines in general. Okay. So actually, uh, I am an agriculturist by profession. So I do agriculture. I am a graduate of uh, University of the Philippines, Las Banyas. So I, I graduated uh, from the agriculture. Uh, so as an agriculturist, I am well aware that food is always a problem. And especially Metro Manila. Metro Manila does not produce its own food. So there's a problem for food security. Since uh, these people from urban areas always rely from those uh, vegetables coming from other uh, provinces. So Philippines is all, uh, always uh, with uh, the typhoons, we're always visited by this uh, uh, 
we're we're always visited by this uh disasters and i think there's a need for for urban agriculture to be to become part of the food policy of the country so that's where i got the passion to do urban agriculture it's always because of food because everyone eats every day and it's such an important part of the culture and we're definitely yes country. um that's true <laughs> yeah as so as you've been working in this space what are the biggest opportunities that you've been seeing um in the Philippine agricultural system or in urban agriculture more specifically yeah um actually in metro manila there are still spaces that are open so, uh, such as uh, rooftops or open fields that can be utilized at least for producing food so these open spaces i think there's the opportunity to produce food um well both community and commercially because i think um this uh, commercial establishment some open spaces they can utilize these open spaces as well and can generate income for them so uh, i think that's one uh, for the communities i think uh there's a need for communities to embrace food security and uh a lot of times I've, i'm hearing that uh food they can can they can always buy food from the supermarket or from the uh, other establishments but they did they don't realize that this food comes from another place and uh, especially right now that there's uh, there's uh, limitations for the movement of such goods so i hope uh, especially with with the with the quarantine in place right now people will realize that uh, food is important and uh, getting where uh, the food comes from is essential and uh, also this will help us in um, shortening the supply chain of food because some of uh, the food ingredients are coming from other countries so as much as possible we want to shorten that food supply and we have to provide this food where it's needed perfect thank you i had a follow-up question to what you mentioned earlier about rooftops and open spaces in um in the city being the most ideal has it been or do you find that those are truly the two um, spaces that are the best for these types of operations or are there other spaces that work well and has that been a challenge in acquiring those spaces around manila for urban um actually um there's some who tries to produce from these rooftops and other open spaces um there are also some people who, who try to produce indoors but then i think it's a challenge here in the philippines since uh the electricity costs here are higher compared to other countries but then um i think there are some who are who does rooftop farming and uh i think there's a big possibility that they can earn from it so i think one of the motivations for doing uh, rooftop farming is also for profit as well. That's great, and and to capitalize as well on the on the sun that is. Yes. Yes, yes. and sun is free. So, uh, actually, I think around sixty percent of the cost for indoor farms is from the LED lights. So, uh, since we can get the sunlight free, so I think we we might use that as well. Yeah, I would imagine it would be um, a good climate with a mix of rain, rain season. And, and yeah. And so in your presentation earlier, you mentioned um, that waste management has been one of the biggest challenges. Have you seen any developments in that since you've founded Urban Agriculture PH, or are there any other challenges that you've noticed since? actually uh it remains uh one of the biggest challenges for metro manila so waste management has been well i don't know uh we have laws for urban agri uh, for uh waste management rather and uh i think uh one of the problems right now is 
where does the waste go? So uh, the government has been promoting the three R's, so reduce, reuse, and recycle. But then what's next? So I think through urban agriculture, we're trying to promote a circular economy in such uh, instance that the waste produced by the households are being used by the farm and then it goes back to the household by providing them clean and fresh vegetables. So what we're trying to have is that system, a circular system that uh, it produces less waste or hopefully no waste and we can provide cheaper and uh, fresher food for the communities. Well, that's amazing. And because you work so closely with the communities, have you seen a difference in how they are now um, perceiving or environmental management or waste management or resource because they're so heavily involved in managing the farm? Have you seen any changes there? Yes, uh, actually, with, with our farms right now, so uh, actually, we reintroduced the concept of composting. And then they realized, oh, uh, why don't we do this more? So it brings awareness to them and uh, they see the importance of doing it because uh, before they, they were just thought of doing compost, but then what's next? They don't know what to do with that compost. So seeing the importance of doing composting, in that, uh, which is important to the farm, so they realize, oh, we can do this for the farm and then we can produce cheaper food. So instead of me buying from the supermarket, uh, which is way costlier compared to producing your own food, so they realize the importance of this, uh, especially in solid waste management. Amazing. Thank you for that. Um, you also mentioned, you know, you talked about your two farms in Makati and in Tagig, and so one is um, more aquaponics focused, another is more community supported agriculture. Do you find that there are certain systems that work best within the Philippine context? Um, I know aquaponics might because of the availability of tilapia in the country. Yeah. Um, so if you could comment on what systems you think would work best um, given the country. Um, actually, um, the technology will depend on how the community perceives it. So for the East Rambo, um, we try to integrate it with, the, with their uh, materials recovery facility. So the barangay has an existing program on solid waste management. So we try to, we try to integrate it and it works. Uh, for the gig, um, actually the, the one who supported the farm, so they're very in, uh, they're interested in doing aquaponics because uh, they see the opportunity of selling vegetables from aquaponics to uh, their partner hotels. So it, it will provide additional income for the farm. And uh, as we all know, when hotels buy uh, produce, they pay higher compared to uh, those produced for, let's say, uh, produced using soil or other methods. So they can get the premium that they need to uh, for this uh, hotel. So um, it will depend on how the community perceives it, and uh, still there's a learning curve with this technology. So uh, I think it's better to uh, for the communities to discuss and uh, check what what works or what what does not work. It's so nice that you've been able to adapt. Um, and, and implement different kinds of farms really based on need and what will be accepted and most successful with the people who are working uh, directly with the farm. So that's incredible. And I think my last question, I, I'm, I'm curious to know, you know, this, this year has brought about some, some unexpected turns, but what are your plans? Do you have any expansion plans for Urban Agriculture PH? And uh, what are your next steps from here? Actually, um, hopefully after this uh, quarantine period in the Philippines, we would want to expand to 15 more barangays in Makati, and hopefully we can get more people as well to promote urban agriculture. So right now in the Philippines, 
there are um, bills pending in the Congress to promote urban agriculture. And we are uh, vocally supporting it. And uh, hopefully more people will, be, will realize the importance of agriculture and urban agriculture as well. So that's our plans for the coming months. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we can share this, uh, our experiences in the future. No, that's so exciting. 15 more communities is, is incredible and so needed, um, especially in a, in a very densely populated urban area like Makati yeah. or Manila in general. Um, so thank you so much, Erwin. It's been such a pleasure and, and such a great learning opportunity for what you in Manila. So thank you and, and congratulations yeah. on all of your success since you've started Urban Energy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.